Hey everybody, my name is Jay Gordon. Welcome back to the uh, Azure Cosmos DB Global User Group. We try to get together every month and we talk about different interesting subjects around Azure Cosmos DB. I am a senior program manager with the uh, Azure Cosmos DB team. We're focused on getting you the information so that you can start uh, innovating, building, saving, uh, growing with your Azure Cosmos DB deployment. Uh, I've got a really great guest today. I want to also say thank you to our partners in the Microsoft Reactor. Um, I am pretty sure we'll get you some more Reactor information before the end of the show today. Uh, but we've got a lot to talk about. There is so much. Uh, I've got a really great guest, Emmanuel Delatang. He is a, um, a global black belt. And I'm you know what? I'm not 100% sure what a global black belt is here at Microsoft, but Emmanuel, he's going to tell me a little bit about that. And he's going to talk about some optimization, cost savings uh, that we can do, all these things. But the one thing that I want to talk to you about really, really quickly before we get started is Azure Cosmos DB Conf 2023. It's coming up in just two weeks uh, on March 28th. It's at 8 a.m. Pacific. Um, you can sign up right away, but I want you to watch a little something about that and uh, we'll get you ready to go. Join us. Join us. Join us for Azure Cosmos DB Conf 2023 on March 28th. Streaming live along with exclusive on-demand sessions. Learn about the latest and greatest of what's coming to Azure Cosmos DB. And get a sneak peek at what members of the community are building. You don't want to miss it. Register with the link below. Be excited to see you there. My favorite thing about Azure Cosmos DB is it empowers developers to do more with less. My favorite thing about Azure Cosmos DB is its ability to scale out to any size. So I don't have to worry about spikes across my usage. It's fully managed with automatic updates and patching. You can work with both relational and non-relational workloads. My favorite thing about Azure Cosmos DB is the five nines of availability that gives me peace of mind my apps will be up. My favorite thing about Azure Cosmos DB is the backing of one of the most comprehensive SLAs in the industry. Azure Cosmos DB is compatible with open source database like PostgreSQL, MongoDB, and Cassandra. I don't have to set up replication on my own. It just works. There are SDKs for different programming languages like C Sharp, Java, Python, and more. So join us at the link below. See you at the Azure Cosmos DB Conference 2023. We're excited to see you there. I think we got it. And you know what? I was right. We did get it. <laughs> so that was great. Um, I'm really hoping that you can go ahead and sign up. I've gone ahead and put in the chat already where you can go to uh, sign up for Azure Cosmos DB Conf 2023. It is free to register. Uh, we can't wait to have you part. So um, just one more little piece of housekeeping before I bring in my guests. Uh, today's session is uh, under the uh, code of conduct for the Microsoft Reactor. Um, the Microsoft is dedicated to empowering every person, organization, uh, to on the 
planet to achieve more. And this includes the Microsoft Reactor events where we seek to provide a respectful, friendly, professional experience for everyone, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, physical appearance, disability, age, race, or religion. So uh, be cool to everybody. Uh, don't in the chat be uh, mean. Don't harass anybody. Don't don't do anything you wouldn't do to your own family uh, that you may love. Um, let's be cool to one another. So uh, just wanted to get that going. So uh, speaking of getting that going, uh, I've got to get my guest going on this show. And like I said, it was Emmanuel Delatang. Hi, Emmanuel. How are you? Hello. All good. All good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. It is a snowy day here in New York City, but somehow or another, I'm getting through it. Uh, so where are you located? I'm based in Paris, Europe. I'm a global yep. black belt uh, based for EMEA customer at Microsoft. So I help internal people and external people to resolve issue with Cosmos DB and put in place Cosmos DB in the best way we can have. And you've got some great NoSQL experience in this world. I, I'd love to hear a little bit about your career's journey and how you got to this point before we kind of start talking about your, your subject for today. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah. I start and I meet NoSQL seven years ago now. Uh, and I work in different company, different technology. So I know very well the Mongo, Mongo API of Cosmos because I know the difference. Cosmos DB, of course, and uh, yeah, I work on several projects with NoSQL, optimizations, different stuff. I'm very happy. Today, I will speak around monitoring and performance, how to monitor, how to get better performance, or how to optimize my Cosmos DB in terms of performance and in terms of pricing. And why I deliver this? Because a lot of customers ask me, uh, can you help us? We want to understand uh, how to optimize the performance, especially for example, after migrations or we develop a new, new things. Gotcha. Well, thank you, Emmanuel, for um, getting us to uh, this point, letting us know a little thing about yourself. Uh, now, I have... Uh, so much interest in being able to uh, build and save and optimize with our database. Uh, it, it's one of the big things that I've uh, spent a lot of time learning about. And you've got far more real world customer based um, experience. And so I'm really interested in seeing your presentation. The one thing I wanted to show everybody before we get started is we've got this great two minute uh, pricing intro around Azure Cosmos DB, which I think will help really everybody get some establishment uh, around exactly what we're gonna be talking about. So here's a little bit about how Azure Cosmos DB pricing works. Azure Cosmos DB helps you get more value for your money by making it easy to manage the components you pay for, database operations and storage. The cost to perform database operations, including memory, CPU and IOPS is normalized and expressed as a request unit more request units are charged for more demanding activities. For database operations, you can select one of two models, provisioned throughput or serverless consumption. Provisioned throughput is the capacity you allocate for database operations measured in the number of request units per second and billed hourly. It works best for workloads that always have some traffic and require high performance SLAs. If the traffic is predictable, you can use standard provision throughput to manually set and adjust capacity as needed. If the traffic is unpredictable, you can use auto-scale provision throughput to instantaneously and automatically adjust capacity between 10 and 100% of your set limit. Auto-scale becomes more cost-effective than standard when traffic is unpredictable and not close to maximum capacity most of the time. Provision throughput may not suit workloads with only occasional database operations and lower performance requirements. These applications can benefit from the serverless model. While it has a higher unit cost, it's consumption-based and only charges for the request units used per database operation. With consumed storage, fees are charged for the total gigabytes used per month for both transactional and analytical storage. You also pay for storage I.O. and analytical storage. Get the most value from your workloads by understanding the components you're built for in Azure Cosmos DB. Well, 
Emmanuel, I think that really breaks down into simple terms how uh, we, we kind of evaluate cost and give people the ability to have some, um, you know, predicted um, requirements. So we know X amount of uh, throughput will be required so we can go ahead and do some planning. So I think you're going to talk to us a little bit about how that planning begins and how we can uh, implement some common tasks to ensure that we're getting the most out of our deployment and saving money along the, uh, that road. So what do you say we get into your presentation? Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, and this is a great introduction because you speak around the basics uh, to understand the pricing. Uh, do you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Okay. So yeah, I will speak uh, around. Uh, when I speak optimizations and when I meet some customer and a lot of customer, usually I always say optimization is not one shot task. It's something that you can do every month regularly. You need to repeat and it's important to not say, okay, let's do an optimization and maybe come back one year after or say, oh, is there now other trouble of performance issue or this? So you have a database and every database needs to be checked. Every database needs to be optimize regularly or even optimize but check and optimizations you have different way of optimizations you have the performance the cut of optimizations what it's important especially when you begin to work on the cloud in general and in more important in cosmos db it's it will not be only dba i start my career before no sql a lot in sql and all optimization was made by dba no, in Cosmos DB, DBA should help and work, but not only developer too, because you are in a cloud. If you made a wrong configuration, maybe you will have overcost or bad performance. And if you not optimize your coding, if you have a query which is not very efficient, the cost of the query will have an impact on the price and maybe they will have a low performance. And remember always when you start to make optimizations, database is a database and it's a cardinality. So there are no magic behind. Even if it's no SQL or SQL, it's more or less the same. So we will speak very quickly because you already, uh, already speak around that, around the Cosmos DB pricing model, what you have when you establish your pricing. What we need to understand, especially when you set up something in Cosmos, you have the default configurations. There are some very good stuff in the default configuration, some less better, I say, and you can optimize. And after understand, okay, how can I measure how it's used, how my Cosmos DB is used? Because sometimes you predict something and you can define, oh, I will need auto scale, it will be great. And I will need 4,000 request units, all will be good. But in the reality, how it's consumed is very different because you have a big success and you need more. And, and it's really important to understand and to review. And after, I will say, okay, now we know what is this, what we can optimize, how to start, how to prevent, and how to optimize the cost performance and the cost performance and price performance. Because if you reduce the price by operations, you will reduce the total amount of requests you need, you need so you will reduce the price of your customers. Just a quick remember, very very quick so azure cosmos db now we offer two kind of things or you have a no sql engine or relational with postgres azure cosmos postgres today we speak a lot in the no sql engine i will not speak only on the no sql i will speak on the mongo api for example too how to reduce the cost with the azure cosmos db mongo api the generality of cosmos db is ready to have a database available all around the world with the multi regions with the data replications and something very important especially when you want to optimize pricing of a total project you have it's a full manage and it can be a serverless so some things to understand and maybe to say okay it should be an option for some environment not maybe production, but other, and it's something very important. So you can fit all the kind of database, NoSQL, relational. In NoSQL, you can be have a document database, graph database, column family key value. Majority of the tips and tricks I will give are available for all the NoSQL ports, document, graph, or column family uh, order. So just a quick remember, yes, request units is very important, and request units, it's an amount of differences. What it's important to understand that every operations 
And one thing very important, the indexing also affects the request unit cost. I will show you in some demo, for example, that if you have index, if you don't have index, what would be the impact of a unique operations? So, and the by default, for example, indexing can have over cost. And I will show all this. the consistency you have chose to will have an impact. We used to charge by request units and really when you read a document of one kilobyte in the NoSQL, Azure Cosmos DB NoSQL API, it will be one request unit, the size of the document. So if you made a select star, of course, it's something to avoid in Cosmos DB because you will have a full scan. It's the same in, S in SQL database in general and in relational, but it's something important to keep in mind. You speak a lot around that. So in the Cosmos DB, yeah, you have all the provision throughput, all the serverless provision with auto scale and manual. It's big by hour, or you can have serverless. In addition, for the billings, you will have all the consumed storage. So all the operational database, all the historical data and index. So sometimes I meet some customer when they have five tera, 10 tera of database and they say, we use only the three last months and we have one year of historical. Why not change this? So it can be help you to reduce the total cost of your database. So use the storage you need based on what you need on your business needs. And after multi-regions, multi-regions, you provision throughput, but they will have an impact on your bill. So just keep in mind that maybe in development, I don't need to have multi-region tests, it should be only in production and pre-productions. I will speak around all this information in addition. You already speak on that in your video. So if you have unpredictable traffic, autoscale is very perfect. If you have predictable traffic, Majority of the people better to use manual throughput. You can set up, for example, a Cosmos or an Azure function that will call the Cosmos, get up or down the request you need by hours. It's something often uh, really easy to do. You can find on my GitHub, for example, some sample how to do this. Um, really, really easy to do. Here, of course, if you have more spike or occasionally spike or you use cosmos db more i would say in development mode for example to test several throughput should be already added to your systems and very efficient so different systems what it's important if you take an example because a lot of people say oh i will use auto scale oh i will use manual you need to choose based on your traffic if you take this traffic for example here with metrics you have sometimes six persons, sometimes 100 persons. If your maximum will be 30,000 request units, for example. So if you calculate, okay, do I choose manual or auto scale? If you choose manual, it will be always 30,000 request units by hours. And if you study the three hours, the cost will be $7.2. If you use auto scale, it will be very adaptable because you go from 6%, 10% first hours. I will have only need 3,000. Second, I will need, for example, 30,000. Third hours, I will need only 11%. So it will reduce and auto scale is very adaptable to this traffic. Now, if I take this other kind of traffic of workload, you can see here the consumption is between 72% and 100%. And if you take manual, the price will be the same. If you take autoscale, yeah, maybe I will not have 30,000 always, but the price of autoscale is a little bigger, a little more expensive than manual autoscale. So in this case, manual will be more adaptable. So you, there are no, there are some principles that you can try, but the most important is to say, okay, do how it's my workload, how the people consume my database, and based on this, I need to adapt. Things that if your database is not consumed the weekend, if the database is not consumed uh, during the night, um, maybe yeah, auto scale will be better or maybe really, really depends on your traffic and this is the most important. So yeah, sometimes you can save with manual, sometimes you can save to auto scale. It just needs to be added to your needs. You have some other idea in the pricing. The backup, the backup you will pay. The first, the good points that we offer, the two first, for example, if you are in the standard backup, the two first backup will be free. 
and you will pay for the other. Sometimes with my customer, I see some configurations where they over backup, I will say. They make, uh, I want to backup every four hours and I will keep 30 days. But my official SLA, I have only to keep seven days of retentions. So why not change? You have the other possibility to use continuous backup with a seven day of retention or 30 days. It's built by gigas or by regions. So think around that. And the analytic storage, it was explained that it was explained, sorry. So the storage and the quantity of red and white operations are based. Just things to on regions. I'm based in Europe, for example, and a lot of my customer also choose Western Europe, Northern Europe, it's the same price. But if you come in France and Trump, for example, the prices are a little up and different. So before to put just check, okay, this is, if I want to optimize, maybe I need to change or to switch from regions. And the consistency, the consistency, your choice, you have five level of consistency in Cosmos DB, you have sessions, strong consistency, boundless statements, um, and, and um, prefix and uh, eventual, they can have an impact on the cost by operations. So if you are in strong consistency, you have two regions, the cost will be multiplied by 1.5 instead of stations, for example. So just be careful on the consistency. It will be helped to reduce the cost by operations. So the total request you need, you will need at the end. One first thing, and it's um, a big part of my jobs, a lot of people ask me, okay, Emmanuel, we have a new project for this client. How can we estimate um, what will be the amount of requests you need to need? And you have a great tools here it's the Azure Cosmos DB capacity calculator. So the good point of this calculator that you have the different Azure Cosmos DB, I will say Cosmos DB no SQL, but Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB too, and you can choose and calculate. So if my customer wants to migrate and he says, okay, I want to migrate to MongoDB, for example, from MongoDB to Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB. I can say, okay, this is the number of regions, this is the amount of data, for example, 50 giga. And here I say, okay, this is a different kind of workload. Do I will need an ethical store? What is most important, it's really to calculate here the estimate throughput with something very complex. The good point is that if you sign in, for example, here, and I'm signing with my name, I can include the JSON. So if you have already, for example, in your actual workload, a JSON, or you know what will be your JSON in target, you can upload your JSON, it will be more realistic. The other things that you can do, of course, you'd say, okay, I know that a document is four kilobytes, and I will say, okay, this is a number of property, I will have 50 property, for example, in my document, how many point read I will have, 10, how many create I will do, for example, in the same regions, how many updates, I will say I have a workload with a lot of updates, how many delayed, five. Emmanuel, or... I am super sorry to interrupt. Do you think you can boost up the the image, the font size just a little bit? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. No problem. It's better now? I would just go up one little more. Okay. It happens. Great, thank you. Okay, sorry about that. And uh, so here are the number of delays. And what good point, for example, for the query, you will uh, you, you can say, okay, I will have two query and the average request by query will be, for example, three, three uh, request units. And here, when I click on calculate, okay, it will calculate and give me here from the details the number of request units I will need for this workload and this item size. So it can be very, very helpful to have a first estimate on how it's going to do, what will be the, the amount of request units I will need. Of course, it will not replace the reality. Uh, how it works, but it's a first good point to estimate this amount of request units that you will have. And that can be really helpful. 
After for the real price, I always encourage the people to go and sorry, I will change the resolutions. I always encourage to go directly to the Azure pricing calculator. In the Azure pricing calculator, you can add Azure Customer DB. Why I see and why I do this? Because you can check, for example, if you are in pairs, you go, you can check if you are in Autoscale, serverless, standard, if you are in a single multi regions, and you can say, okay, this is my request units I will have. This is the regions. And you can see, for example, if I am in front central, I will have a price. If I move to, for example, Western Europe, who is here, the price will be a little different. So you can really adjust the price base and the regions, how much that I will have in my transactional store, do I enable, what will be my backup, and what will be, in my case, the price of my backup. So you will have all the detail of your cost. So for me, it's a really combination. The capacity calculator will help me to determine how much request units I will need. And the pricing calculator will tell me exactly what, how much I need. One of the things that in the pricing calculator, I can estimate not only my production, but my pre-productions, my development environment, my server environment. And this is really something very interesting. Let me continue. So choose between serverless, manual, autoscale, uh, really depends on your workload, depends on what you need. And it really needs to be based. A lot of customers say, okay, but how can I do? How can I change? How can I modify? So, what you need to understand when you are in Cosmos DB, it's you have some different configurations. And you have configuration at account level, at database level, and container level. What it's important to understand that when you set up something, some Features can be enabled, disabled. For example, at account level, I can change the backup policy. I can modify the consistency model. Uh, I can modify the other regions. But if I choose a serverless account, I cannot move from serverless to throughput, so manual throughput or auto scale. So it's something really to think before. Same, for example, when you choose a database, you can have share throughput at database level and some container uh, with uh, provision throughput, but you cannot move a container with a share throughput to a container with individual throughput. So the type of throughput. So you, you, you need really to be careful on some configurations. Some good points that you can enable or change index policy at container level, even if it's in production, you can add a TTL to reduce the size of your database. You can modify the backup policy, enable the synapse link after, for example. So you will have, when you are in production, some configuration that you can change, but some not. So you need to be very, very careful around that. So in terms of default configurations, you can change manual throughput to auto scale, come back to manual change, uh, modify the throughput by code, modify the throughput with the auto scale, modify the throughput level, change your region configuration, modify your backup configurations, enable or disable features who can have a big impact in terms of performance, uh, for example. But for example, you cannot move throughput to serverless or opposite from serverless to throughput. So it's something very, very different. And you can not modify the collection from a shared database throughput to dedicate throughput. And it's something very important to understand at the beginning, uh, because that can be a huge impact. And having a mix is usually something best. I will show you more or less a real use case where it's a way to reduce uh, the, the pricing. So optimize, before to optimize, you need to measure what is my situation, how can I measure my Cosmos DB. And there are some very interesting things that you have some great tools in Cosmos DB. You can use our Azure Monitor that will give you a general overview, quick orientations. You will see the biggest trouble that you can have, how you consume. So it's something interesting. And after you can go really more deeper and check the logs where we will have a lot of details 
uh, what will be my most costly uh, request, for example, and you can replay this request. What it's important that's by default, especially the logs are not enabled. So you need to enable the login. And if you want something you can do in addition, it's you can set up some automatic alert. Um, for example, I will speak in more detail. So monitoring will help you really to have an overview. You can check 80% of your work, I would say in 20% of your times. You can monitor the performance, monitor the failure, and check uh, uh, a lot of things. So through the, the monitoring. More than slide, I will prefer to go to my Cosmos DB and show you the real world. So here I have one, for example, Cosmos DB Mongo uh, API. And if you go to the inside here in the monitoring, you will see uh, how it was. So you will have an interview. Okay, what my data? Do I ingest some data? Do I have some client requests during the last four hours? Yeah, is master build info? What is, do I have from failed, for example? Do I have I consume, so you will have a big overview. Of course, you can add and say, okay, this is let's go for the last 12 hours. And you can see here, I will I had a, a, a lot of information. You can go in more details and see the throughput. How was consumed the throughput? Oh, here look like I have some operation here too. Uh, do I have 100 percent of my targets throughput consume? Yes or no? And do how it's provision in terms of request you need by uh, shard. So you will have a lot of information. What you can do, it's really more the request. Oh, I made some aggregations. I had some different operation like find, some insert, some information around having parameters inside. So you have this for Mongo API. You have the same for Cosmos. Here I have Cosmos website. and you have all the total requests you need, the normal consume, so really, really, really more detail. And that's the first thing to understand and to check. The other thing, the other I speak was the logs. And here, what's the most important thing, it's really go to the diagnostic settings. And when you are in diagnostic settings, enable your logs. By default, you can choose all. Here I have an Azure Cosmos DB no SQL API. So I will not enable the Mongo request. I will not enable the Cassandra request, Gremlin stable, only what I need. Okay, and send all of this. Why I do this? Because I will show you, I can very go deeper and find very interesting information. So enable the logs, put in place the monitoring. It's really the first, sorry, the first step to do when you begin to work with Azure Cosmos DB. So Emmanuel, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we do have a question from the audience and I'd love to okay. hear the answer of it myself. So Peter, and thank you, Peter, for sending in your question asks, what's the best approach to use the request charge in the SDK in order to see the cost of a request? Yeah, in, I fully agree. So you can find in the logs the cost of each query, and you can have the same in SDK. So you, you have the both solutions, I will say. When you have, when you, you when you develop and to sensibilize, I will say, your developer using the SDK and finding the cost inside the SDK, it's something important. But when you are in productions, or sometimes you will put your code in production, you will have different query, you will grow. Having the capacity to check back what is the real cost of the operations. Let me go and it will be more uh, maybe understanding and we will have the answer. If I go here to the logs, okay, I can have by default, and that's this is something very good. Here I will have in some diagnostic here the capacity to see, okay, what was my top request units that I have. And here I can see that I have this first query. I have this query here, select star from C where C rating on the, uh, and I will have all the detail. It's a document who we'll make this. And here I have the average request units by executions. So 
when you are in the SDK, yeah, you can have the cost of a query, but it's more in development phase, maybe in pre prod you can test it. When you are in production software, when you put this, having all these informations, maybe you don't need to have this information in your code because you can find in the logs and it should be more easy, especially to, to retry. The good points to the logs that you, of course, you can filter by collection, you can filter by um, database or all of this, but you will have a really, really detailed. You have not only the select, but you can have all the operations too. So if I go and create a new here operations, let me find the top operations by request units, and you will find all the operations. So all the upset what was the cost of one upset for me for example how many operation i had what is the total consume so it's you have all the detail but you can build statistics and see in the sdk you will find okay this is the cost of my insert this is the cost of my update but if sometimes some customers they have oh i have a big query it costs 200 requests but i execute one time a month but I have this request units, well, this query where the consumption is five request units, not so much, but I execute 1 million by minutes. So it will help you to go more deeper and find more what it's better to optimize. So you can see the detail, but you can find the big mass, how it's consumed and more easily working on this. I hope I have answered to your question. Yeah. I think so, you did. I think that uh, that was a really great explanation. Appreciate that. Uh, and I want to remind everybody also, like if you have more questions, uh, please, please leave them in the chat and we'll address them. Uh, we've got about 25 minutes or so left in our session. Uh, and I just want to remind everybody uh, one more thing that if you uh, would like to do exactly what Emmanuel is doing today, which is presenting, uh, go ahead, check out our intake form, aka.ms slash Azure Cosmos DB slash user group submission. I will put that in the chat. Uh, but till we uh, speak again, I will allow Emmanuel to continue his presentation. Thank you. Yeah, so th this is what I show you in the login and you can find a lot of things. One interesting thing is that, yeah, you can send to log analytics, but you can send to block storage, event head, you, and in parallel. So you can offer the possibility to review, for example, at developer in block storage or log analytics. It, it should be a good option if you want. I have put in my presentations a lot of that uh, query sample. I will go very, very quickly. What it's important is that you have this, of course, for Azure Cosmos NoSQL API, but you have the same, and you, you can find, you have the same, for example, if you use a Mongo. If you use a Mongo, you can check, okay, what is the biggest operation I have, so by request charge or so by duration. So you have really the possibility to, in the logs, to query all kind of, informations and we try all the informations you want to find and that's something very interesting one big thing is that all majority of the query you see here in my presentations it's in the public documentations so if you go to the public documentation of azure um, cosmos db you will find the diagnostic query you will see if you use um, for example, Azure Diagnostic or uh, dedicate a re a request, dedicate source, you will have all the sample really very easy. Now, how you can prevent, how you can see with Azure. A lot of customers are saying, yeah, Emmanuel, okay, you have this, but do we have especially a tool that will help you to find where or to have a kind of auto detect systems where we can optimize the cosmos, optimize in terms of cost, but not only in terms of performance, reliability, or security. And yes, the good thing that's inside Azure Cosmos DB, 
you can have advisor recommendations. Advisor recommendations will give you some sample and some example of optimizations. Here you can see it's my demo website, okay? And I have, okay, you can enable something to have a better performance. You can have something to have better security. And it's a really, really always a good start. So if you go to your Cosmos DB website, you can go at um, here as your advisor recommendations. Yes. And it will give you. In my case, for example, I have two things on security. I don't have any firewall rule. Who is not the best practice? And maybe uh, yeah, I should use Active Directory only or certifications method will be already more secure. So for every, I will say people, if you have, for example, um, the advisor recommendations can go very deeper and suggest, for example, to move from auto scale to manual or move to manual to auto scale to optimize your cost. It will tell you that the one performance, maybe you can add some indexes or modify some indexes. So it really, really, really will go deeper and give you a lot of information. The other good point is that you can use advisor recommendations not only account by account, because some people they have. 100 account of Cosmos DB and they would like to optimize all, you can use as your advisor recommendations and Cosmos DB can be a part and you can analyze multiple Cosmos DB at the same way. So if I go here to the advisor, okay, he told me some information and here I can see all the information, all the security, and I can see for my 6db account, I can enable the rules and it will give you for all the Azure Cosmos DB informations with all the detail of each Azure Cosmos DB information. So it's really something where to start. It's a good start point. Uh, using the advisor, it will help you. One other big thing to view it in general the throughput configurations. The throughput configuration should be based on usage. Okay, do I need to have a throughput at collection level? Do you need to have something I share database? It will help you around the index, index suggestions. When you query, you can have now some index metrics. If you are with the Azure NoSQL database or if you use, for example, the explain with Mongo API. And Default index policy, it's not optimized in 99% of the case, especially when you are in productions. So we've used index policy, it's really something. And when I start to check with my customer, 100% of the times index policy are never be reviewed. Uh, so it's something. Partition key, of course, if you query with partition and run partitions, and you need to educate your developer on code optimizations. Yeah, you can make a query, but maybe if you use a point read, it will be already less costly and most important. How I will ingest using bulk. So they are ready to review at configuration level, but not only at, I will say, development level. It's something very important. And one thing, you can set up some alert. You can set up some alert, especially if you receive automatic alert, if you uh, wants to prevent the consumptions because one thing is that if you are a developer, you can create multiple collections, for example, just by coding, and you will create 400 request units by collections, but you want to avoid a huge amount of request units because you are in development or you want to optimize this. You can, as administrator, receive some alerts that will help you to prevent. So it's something important. And not a lot of people put alerts, but it can help you. Now, how can I optimize? I can optimize my Cosmos DB first with commercial optimization. And it's important to understand that in Cosmos DB, we have the capacity to buy reserve capacity. It's on provision throughput based on your consumptions, and you will have some information. One of the things, especially for some use cases, if you have a lot of requests, you can use a dedicated gateway. It will work only for Azure No SQL, and, and you can have a free chair too. It's very, very important 
Uh, so one Cosmos DB account by subscriptions can have this free tier. So you will have the first 1,000 requesting it on 25 giga for free at Vita Meternam, I will say. So for all the day. Sometimes we see some clients and never set up this. So it, it, it should. After, of course, you have all the technical optimizations, partitioning, social model index, caching, choose the correct scenario from the price against performance. In some case, yeah, auto scale is better or manual, but sometimes I see, for example, this request, the provision auto scale where you have a consume really, really near the max auto scale or less than the consume. Manual will be more adapt. So really needs to, to, to be adapt at your, at your basics. A lot of people they say, okay, how to start in the good way? To start in the good way, it's really start with a professional provision throughput at manual. Because when you will ingest, when you will start your project, you will ingest some data, you know exactly how much request you need, you will need, how many hours it will take. You can calculate all these information. After when you will put in productions, you don't know. You don't know how it will do. You don't know the traffic pattern. So observe, putting in auto scale and regularly check and adjust. Adjust if you can maybe or stay in auto scale, but reduce the total cost or go to manual. We have the one more or less one thing. If you are currently on auto scale, check the average utilizations. If you are up to 66 posts, always switch to manual because the cost of a request you need in manual will be less expensive. If you are at less than 10 percent, okay, go to scale down, scale down at maximum. If you are between 10 and 66 percent, you are optimal. And if you are in manual, just check, okay, are you up to 66 percent? Do you have throttle? You need to scale up. That means you don't need, you don't have enough request in it. If you are in low throttle, it's optimal. If you are less than 60 persons, check your workload. Is it, is it predictable? Is it unpredictable? Maybe switch to other scale. So these rules of 60 persons can help you to choice between one or the other. When you optimize, things are different. In optimize, I use, I say, uh, you don't have only one Cosmos in production. You have development, test, pre-production, integration, and product. And things to optimize the performance by operation to reduce the cost by operation will be help you to reduce all the total things. So partition index, integrate cache can help you to reduce all these informations. For the order of the environment, I always advise when you are in development, you can use the emulator. So it's free, you can download or use a serverless. Some people transfer information from emulator to test. It's complicated working at multiple people in the emulator. Yeah, but serverless, it's perfect. It's help you. There are some constraints that could be very, very good in development, not having more than 50 giga. It's for me in development, you, need, you should have these kind of things. You can enable the log. You can check the cost of the query. You can see if they use correctly the index or no. If you are in test, Okay, since why I need to enable multi regions, for example, in test. Sometimes, majority of the times, I can enable multi regions if I want to proceed at the test, but on demand, because it's really uh, on demand, I can do this, or serverless can be enough on test. If you are not in production, but pre prod or integration, why not using on demand pre prod using out of place restore? One of my customers said, yeah, I have my prod and I have always my pre-prod at the same and I use my pre-prod three day a week, three day a month, sorry. Why you don't do a pre-prod on demand? You have your prod when you need a pre-prod or you want to test something, just ask for a restore, make a restore and you will have during three or four days and after a delay or of course change in configurations, reduce the configuration. but why keeping the pre-prod as prod? It's really a very big question to ask. And the regions, same. If you are in pre-prod, okay, you are in multi-regions in prod. In pre-prod, you can just enable one regions and on-demand change. To replicate, it's very fast. So just anticipate. Of course, you have all the index policy. 
using composite index can help really to reduce. I will not go very, very deeper on this because you can see at Azure Cosmos Big Conference um, one sessions where I will explicit have a sample of this and show you the impact of a composite index. I prefer to go really uh, and continue. So you have different level and you can put the throughput or a database or a container. And having our database level can be a good fit, especially when you <coughs> have some collections that will not consume a lot of request units and you know that there will be call every uh, uh, every minute and not every second. And you, you, you can have container that are time chair, for example. It should be good options. I just take a, a scenario. I have one database, for example, with 20 collections. 18 consume less than 60 request units, 100 request units, and two maximum 5,000. If I choose DB level, for example, I can have 18 that will consume 100 request units minimum by collections, and my cost will be 11,800. If I choose at collection level, I will have 18 at 400 and one at 10,000, and it will consume in total 17,200. So it's just a save of 4,600, which is $200.50 by month with no change, just a configuration. So it's something that can be very, very uh, integral. In terms of optimizations, let me show you one or two things because a lot of customers, for example, they ask me, okay, I uh, in NoSQL, I know, or in Mongo, how can I determine, for example, the cost of one operations? So what I will do here, for example, I say, okay, let me do an insert and you have this magic command that you can use. So here I just show you, I connect to my Cosmos DB, I use the database test, and in the test I make an index and I have no index. If I go to the portal, I can review here in my Mongo Data Explorer, and here I have something named test here with the test and just the document I have created. So it's this new document with an ID, a tip core, and val. What it's important that you have this magic query with DB run command get last statistics that will give you, for example, how much the cost of the insert. And you can say, wow, it's very, very big. Why? Because here the database doesn't take this before. I don't show you, I'm sorry on that. But the database don't exist before, and that's why the cost is so high because I create the collection, I create the things. If, for example, I continue and say, okay, let me go to use text insert. So let me switch to another database. Oops, sorry. And while you're doing that, we got about 10 minutes less, I should say, about eight minutes left in our session. Yeah. Okay, no worry. And uh, just so everyone knows, uh, we've got a question. Uh, maybe we can do that right after you finish showing this quick bit of uh, MongoDB and wrap it up. Sound good? Yeah. So here, if I go to test insert, when you create something by default through the portal, especially in the Azure Cosmos Mongo API, you will have the wildcard index. And the wildcard index can have a big um, impact on some informations. So it's it's something really to, to be careful. If I go here and say, okay, let me do an insert. Um, and sorry, test insert, but insert. Okay, I add a new object and I run. Okay, the cost of my insert is 30. If I go back to test, okay, and now I will ingest new informations, but always the same informations. 
And let me do now a db run command. I can see that this insert here, because I don't have any index in test insert, have a cost of 7.05. If I go to here, a test insert, it's another collection with the same element, and I send the same type of documents. But here in this test insert, I have a wildcard index. That means every field will be indexed. The cost of my insert is much, much more higher. So just be careful on this impact. One of the big things, especially when you work with Azure Cosmos, it's having the capacity to, for example, when I made a find, to use the explain command. And in the explain command, you have a very, very important information. Sorry. Oops. You will see exactly, for example, and here he will suggest and help you to resolve the issue. He said, okay, I, found, I made a find and I use this filter um, type, but here there are no index on type. So adding an index on types can help your radius. And here you can see, okay, he will suggest that the cost of this find will be 7.11. And you have two very, very important information. It's estimated delay rate limiting millisecond and retry due to rate limits. When you use Mongo, you can enable server-side retry. Server-side retry will be very helpful to control, I will say, the maximum of request units. And if you don't have enough, you will put in a queue and wait to execute. But I have a customer that called me two weeks ago, for example, and say, whoa, I don't understand. Now we begin to have some delay. And yeah, because he used SSR, the cost was, I would say, we can control the cost, but you ha he had some trouble because due to the missing of request units here, he needs to put some data, some uh, query or some insert using this delay. And here you can find the exact information. After, of course, what is important, it's if you create an index and on this boat here. So send query. I will just first, oops, it's not the correct. Copy pass sometimes. Have some issue. Oops. So here I create an index and on the index I made, here I see, okay, I have already this index and the cost here will be from seven to 2.90. So yes, index is very important. You can add composite index, of course, really, really important to use. So to have all these metrics, especially when you are with Mongo API, use the explain command check when you retry the information. If you have a pass not index, for example, you can have component index. When you have a multi-criteria, it's very, very important. Of course, check if you have multi-partition query. The other things to check, it's really the estimate delay from waiting and the retry due to wait limits. Be on the last API versions too, because a lot of our customers, they are in 3.640. And if you update, you can have better performance and something important. When you query with Azure Cosmos DB in OSQL, you can use a portal to check the cost and the performance, and it's already good points. You can use, especially in the SDK, the index metrics to check the potential index that you have. Uh, you can use composite index for multi-criteria. Uh, it's something before the composite index work only for order. Now it's work for the multiple filter, uh, filter clues, and that's very important. And if you have big query, if you have a query that's used more than 25, in majority of the case, but not all, adding an order by will reduce of 20%. Uh, check multi production query, it's very important. And if you use point read, um, I don't know if everybody is familiar with point read, but point read, the cost of point read will be one, for example, if you have a one kilobyte document, and the same for a select will be 2.3. So if you have multiple. When you write, of course, try to reduce the number of index, adjust the request units, uh, the time for insert, it's really important. 
try to insert through batch. Um, and when you are with Mongo in the Mongo driver, you can set the order rate to false. If you set the other one to true or false, it will have an overcost uh, if you are in true. Uh, so disable the SSR for not slow down the insert to not have estimate delay. And that's something important if you want very high performance and be on the last versions. For the Mongo, I would say reduce the number of index, use bulk operations. Um, sometimes you can find that you have old code and it don't use the bulk, and it's something that can be very, very helpful. And if you, uh, instead of, if you modify the document, instead of using upset, use replace. It's less costly, uh, for example. And think partial update. Partial update will optimize the performance because it will make a partial, uh, it will change only some information in the document. And that will reduce the cost. It will not be a massive reduce. You will not divide by three or four, but it will reduce a little. So it's all these different tricks. To resume my really personal advice, enable monitoring logs when you create an endpoint. Majority of the guys, some people ask me, oh, can you help? Yes. Okay, do we have what do you have in the log? What do you have in the monitoring? They are not enabled. So we need first to enable and I need to wait one week, come back and see things at the model organizations. Requesting it by partitions, requesting it by database. Partitions, what is a key? Um, make a query with or without partitions. Avoid the default index policy that understand this and things cloud, things cloud, everything you can do. Avoid to have collection test one, test two, test three, never delay it when it's created. That will consume 400 requests in it, but that's something very important. Let me maybe present last things here and there. Yeah, um, We're just about out of time, Manuel. So uh, it, it may be best for us to kind of close out if you, you're okay with that. Yeah, yeah, no worry, no worry. Uh, just want to, to, to show the point reader. Uh, it's, uh, you, you, you can find uh, all this code in uh, GitHub, CosmoDB optimizations. But when you made a query, you have a minimum cost. And when you made the same in the print rate, because the total request you need, it's really very, very slow. Gotcha. Well, Emmanuel, we've learned a lot, a lot today. And um, I know our viewers have really enjoyed it. Um, there have been some questions that we're not going to get to. So here's what I'm going to ask you all to do. If you've got a question that you would like answered, uh, Emmanuel is on LinkedIn. You can go right there to his LinkedIn address. It is in our uh, our comments as well. You can ask him whatever it is about uh, this subject or any other things that he can help you get started around NoSQL and Azure Cosmos DB. Um, that, that's really it for us today. Uh, Emmanuel, I wanted to say thank you. Uh, yeah. I really appreciate you uh, being part of the show today. Um, you have anything else other than uh, I, I think you're doing a Cosmos DB Cov talk. Is that right? Sorry? You're doing an Azure Cosmos DB yes. Cov talk, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I will present uh, optimizations and uh, especially we'll see the impact of uh, composite index and their demo. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I know we're all really looking forward to it. Uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, even our friend Peter. Peter says thank you. Uh, Jeb Shahid uh, also says thank you. Uh, we had a great time. I want to say that if you've ever got anything else interesting to talk to our audience about, I know they'll want to hear it. All right. So uh, until next time, we're going to give a big wave goodbye. Thank you, everybody, for being part of this. And uh, we will see you. Uh, next month, I think we got a really good one around Terraform. Uh, so we'll be sending out all the information around that very soon. Uh, thank you, Emmanuel. Thanks.